Okay, so oh, in the last class we had seen that the Hamilton's approach uh, provides a nice way of writing the first order differential equations and in that method the Hamiltonian method we write first uh, express T and V in terms of of what P and Q. In the Lagrangian method, we wrote it in terms of Q and Q dot. So, there lies one difference. Huh? Then you obtain the partial derivatives. Oh, H is just T plus V. Then write the Hamiltonian function H as T plus V. Then you obtain delta Q and right. Once you have done so or because there will be uh, different directions, do not talk, there will be different directions and so you will have to take the derivative of the Hamiltonian function with respect to each of these and then finally, once you have done that the equations would nicely be expressed as uh, q i dot is equal to and p i dot is equal to minus uh, okay so this is the essential technique now you have seen that in some cases these equations will yield dotted terms in the right hand side which again you have to substitute from here in order to express in terms of undotted terms. So, that is the essential technique, but now so far we have solved problems that are you know more of the, the uh, circuit or sort of physics oriented and that might erroneously give you an idea that this method is these methods that I have discussed so far Lagrangian and the Hamiltonian these are not all that much useful in engineering systems. So, today let us attack an engineering system right away. Most of you are electrical engineers, so let us uh, do a electrical engineering problem, a DC machine driving a load. Hmm. So, what is the structure of the DC machine? You have the armature, okay. the armature is fed by means of a supply a DC supply. There will of course be some resistance and inductance of the armature winding. So, let us take that out so that we can directly see that they are in the circuit. So, that is the armature circuit. Hmm. Assume that the field is constant, we will later assume that the field is also variable, but to, to, to begin with let us assume that the field is constant which means it could be a permanent magnet machine or a separately excited machine and you have applied a voltage say E to this and this is what the inductance of the armature resistance of the armature. Now here this fellow rotates and there has to be a mechanical system to it. So from here there is a shaft. and the shaft is moving something say a disc with some mass uh, against this. Okay. Now, this uh, armature has a mass or moment of inertia assume that to be I 1. Here there will be a bearing and bearing will have some friction. So, assume that to be R 1. 
Similarly, here this disc will have a mass or moment of inertia call it I 2 and these will have another bearing friction called R 2. Fine. Uh, there is another degree of freedom you might notice that these two uh, are not moving exactly in step. There has to be some kind of a uh, springiness of the shaft. So, that is represented by a spring constant k. If it is not there, if it is rigid, then they will not have their own independent degrees of freedom. So, in order for these two to have their independent degrees of freedom, this fellow should be slightly uh, torsionable. So, there will be a torsional spring uh, here. So, suppose this is the system. How do we represent it in terms of a set of differential equations? Fine. First, let us identify what are the variables. This is the electromechanical system. The main advantage of whatever we are doing is that you know the methods of writing the differential equations for electrical systems. You know it for the mechanical systems individually, but when you attack a electromechanical system, then these methods are very handy because they treat them in the same way. Hmm? Good. So, what are the state variables? What are the, the variables in the system? We are trying to identify the minimum set of coordinates. Tell me what are they? Here there will be a current flowing. In our uh, notation, we will consider the charge flowing here. The electrical system will will it need any other variable? No, one will suffice. How, how about the mechanical system? We will need the position of this uh, armature and the position of this that uniquely identifies. So, there will be a position coordinate q say let us call it q 1, q 2 and q 3. So, these are the position coordinates. Position means angle essentially hmm? and q 2 dot will be the angular velocity, q 3 dot will be its angular velocity. Fine. Now, notice that the electrical system and the mechanical system, how are they coupled? I am not talking about the physical coupling, I am talking about the mathematical coupling between them. How are they coupled? The electrical system applies a torque on the mechanical system and the mechanical system responds by applying a back EMF on the electrical system. That is how they are coupled. Fine. And what are their these, these couplings? The back EMF E B is K phi I A is Q 1 dot right and the torque uh, we will not write it as T because T we are uh, representing the kinetic energy by. So, we will write it as say F is. So, this is the torque. Sorry, no, this, this is your, this is my F. Is K phi I A is the torque. The back EMF E B is K phi uh, the speed of rotation of this one. So, okay. Now, these two K phi's are in fact the same. These two k's are in fact the same. That is what, uh, if you assume that the power input into the uh, motor is equal to the power output into out of the motor. If you ignore the losses, then these two are actually equal. Else, there will be slight difference, which you can ignore for now. So these two are the relationship of the interaction between the mechanical subsystem and the electrical subsystem. Now, one convenient way of handling this would be to assume to handle the electrical subsystem and the mechanical subsystem separately. Why? Because then the electrical subsystem will be simply a circuit with which sees a voltage which is the back EMF. You can do it that way. A mechanical subsystem is just a, the mechanical system which sees a torque. You can do it that way. First, let us do it that way and then we will handle it as a as integrated system. So, for the electrical subsystem and the mechanical subsystem. 
So, electrical subsystem. What will be the kinetic energy? What will be the potential energy? So, we will put the subscript E. Okay. Half q1 dot square L a, right. So, this is half L a q1 dot square, that is the kinetic energy. The potential energy is q1 is the direction in which E is added, E is applied, but it is acted on in the opposite direction by back EMF. So, the total voltage effectively applied on this, this, this circuit is E minus E B and that adds, acts in the direction of E uh, Q1. So, we will have to put a minus E minus E B sorry E B into Q1 fine. Uh, the Rayleigh term of the electrical subsystem is half R A Q 1 dot square, right. So, done. Uh, from here, we can write the momentum, momentum, because momentum is uh, is what? Lagrangian is T minus V. Yes. So, okay. Hmm? No, only the Lagrangian. So, the P1 is the derivative of only the Lagrangian, the, the relative term does not appear. So, this is nothing but the momentum. You can see L is equivalent to the mass, Q1 is equivalent to the velocity. So, it is the electrical momentum. Hmm. So, this is the momentum. So, now we can write your Hamiltonian function as T plus V is equal to. So, what is T plus V? T we substitute it here, so that we can express in terms of P. It will be, uh, okay, it will come twice. So, 1 by twice L A in the denominator uh, p 1 square right this, this term minus v. So, it becomes plus uh, e minus e b u 1. Huh? Yep, sorry. So, T plus V, it is minus, you are right. Hmm. So, this is the Hamiltonian function. So, if you write the Hamiltonian function, then the rest falls in place immediately. Q 1 dot is the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to, I will write E, with respect to P 1, that is derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to P 1 is Yes, P1 by LA. Good. The other one, P1 dot is equal to, we have to use this. So, take a derivative of this and this. It is with respect to Q1, it will be this term. Uh, minus of that term. So, E minus E B because it was negative here hmm. uh, minus okay, R A Q 1 dot, but dot I do not want in the right hand side. So, we can substitute huh? E minus E B minus R A P 1 by good equation done. Uh, 
Now, in the mechanical subsystem, the T kinetic energy of the mechanical side will consist of the two bodies in their own kinetic energies. So, it is half I 1 Q Q 2 yes Q 2 dot square plus half I 2 Q 3 dot square fine. Okay. Now, the potential energy would be potential energy would be due to the k their k term here and there would be the torque applied that will be acting in the direction of q2 huh? so we have to take into that into account so it is half k uh, it is q2 minus q3 q2 minus q3 is the torsion in that spring that is squared plus f acting in the direction of q2 so minus f q2 hmm? and the relative term is the two friction elements so half r1 q2 dot square plus half R2 Q3 dot square, is that right? So, the three terms we have written down. Now, we have to express T plus V in terms of P and Q, remember that. Hmm? So, we have to find out what is P or P2 and P3. So, P3, P2 is uh, basically the derivative of the, the this term derivative of the Lagrangian we had written because the derivative of the potential with respect to q dot was 0. So, we can write directly like this uh, q 2 dot is i 1 q 2 dot that is p 2. Similarly, p 3 is the derivative of the this thing in terms of q 3 dot is I 2 Q 3 dot obviously, because these are the two angular momenta fine. Now, we have to express this in terms of that. So, we will have to write H of the mechanical side is we have to express this huh? which means these terms we will have to write in terms of the P's that we have just derived. It will be 1 by twice i 1 p 2 square plus 1 by twice i 2 p 3 square plus the potential term plus half k q 2 minus q 3 square uh, then minus now f q 2 k is only 1 there, there is only one no wait 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 uh, we will do that later first let us obtain the mechanical systems stuff independently and then we will substitute so, this is the, the uh, total Hamiltonian function. So, we can now write q 2 dot is derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to p 2 what remains only this. So, p 2 by i 1 hmm. similarly q 3 dot will be trivial. is simple p 3 by i 2 
right? From here. So these thing, things are relatively easier. Let us go to the momentum terms. P 2 dot that will be let us first write and then evaluate H m by del Q 2 minus del R that is what the first term when differentiated with respect to Q 2 yields two terms here fine. So, you write down them carefully k minus k q 2 minus q 3 hmm? yeah. So, uh, plus f okay. yes f and this term minus r 1 q 2 dot fine and then this has to be substituted. So, we will write minus k q 2 minus q 3 plus f minus r 1 q 2 dot is p 2 by i 1 done fine. Okay. The next equation would be p 3 dot is is what? Uh, again just use this with 2 substituted by 3. So, you have the first equation this remains. So, this remains only it will be k q 2 minus q 3 and then uh, yes and, and, and this relative term will remain okay. that will be minus r 2 q 3 dot which you can now substitute as r 2 p 3 by done. So, at this stage your certain things remain where are the equations where are the equations finally, here are equations. E b remained and we need to substitute that uh, f remained we need to substitute that. So, just substitute them from whatever we had written earlier and and put them back. The moment you put them back you will need to substitute these hmm, because they are at uh, dotted terms. So, once you substitute can we, can we write down the equations now? this term will have another term, this term will have to be substituted from there, you do that, okay, I leave. So, this is how the equations for the DC motor could be obtained. You might argue that now here we took the two things separately. What if you take them as one single electromechanical system, can't you do that? Yes, you can do that, but in doing so in when when you do this this kind of problems in exams you might as well argue that I will do it as one single electromechanical system, but there has to be some cautions exercised. Let me illustrate that because otherwise you might commit problem there. Uh, let us do it as when when we treat the whole thing as a single electromechanical system, there the variables remain the same. But there has to be some uh, problems regarding the interaction between the electro electrical part and the mechanical part in terms of these. Hmm. Let us see. Let us do it by the Lagrangian method first, hmm. not going by the Hamiltonian rule because that is another method I taught you have to uh, learn how to use it. So, in this case the T I will write treated as a single electromechanical system then T is uh, it will be the same the 
the three kinetic energies half uh, L A Q 1 dot square plus half I 1 Q 2 dot square plus half I 3 Q 3 dot square done. Okay. Potential energy V here uh, notice what is what is the total potential energy? Potential energy will include the back EMF, potential energy will include the torque, and that is what we need to treat carefully. Huh? So, first the electrical part it is uh, minus E minus E B into Q 1 it appeared. Okay. Now, plus half uh, K Q 2 minus Q 3 of the spring minus F Q 2 this is the torque. So, notice there was this term and there was this term that naturally appeared they are inside the system still they appeared. Now, we have to do something about that. So, let us first substitute what we know they are substitute it you get minus uh, E minus K phi E B is Q 2 dot Q 1 plus half K Q 2 minus Q 3 square minus F is K phi Q 1 dot right K phi I A Q 2 fine leave it like that and the total Rayleigh function is half R A Q 1 dot plus half R 1 q 2 dot square plus half r 2 q 3 dot square. Now, notice one problem the problem is that in the whole derivation we had assumed that the v is independent of the velocities and they are dependent now v is now dependent on the velocities and therefore, we cannot use exactly the same formulation, but still we can use the similar formulation because we had proceeded up to one point by without assuming that and at some point we had introduced that assumption at what point when we had said that we know what the delta of the Lagrangian of the Q 1 dot is we said that is equal to that is what will not happen here. Where did we use it? At one stage we had obtained the Lagrangian equation as d d t of the derivative of t with respect to q q 1 q i dot minus derivative of the v with respect to q i plus derivative of the Rayleigh with respect to q i dot equal to 0. This we said that uh, if we can write this as the uh, okay, no here it was the Lagrangian here it was Lagrangian. So, there was no problem here the problem was here we said that since V is independent of Q i dot we can substitute this as the Lagrangian this we cannot do now. So, we will have to use this equation as the basic equation on the basic basis of which we obtain the equation everything will the same will be the same go ahead do it. In terms of this we have we will have the second order equations as T first the in the direction of the Q 1 will be this derivative it will be L A Q 1 double dot right first term. Second term the derivative of the Lagrangian T minus V with respect to 
q 1 it will be this term only the other terms vanish. So, it will be minus uh, e minus k phi q 2 dot yes okay plus this term plus r a q 1 dot is equal to 0 that is the first equation. Second equation do the same thing in where q 2 is here, q 2 is here, q 2 is here you will have uh, i 1 q 2 double dot minus in terms of q 2 what remains here it remains here it remains. So, write it carefully minus k phi q 1 dot plus k q 2 minus q 3 plus r r 1 q 2 dot equal to 0 right. Uh, the third equation will be i similarly i 2 I can write almost by similarity with this q 3 double dot minus when you do it in terms of 3 what remains this remains nothing else. So, I will have to write it carefully it will be minus k q 2 minus q 3 that does the potential part plus the relay part it will be plus r 2 q 3 dot equal to 0. So, these 3 are the Lagrangian equations fine but we want to derive it in the first order hmm. and we have already derived it we want to see that we are doing doing it right. So, we define the potentials p 1 is equal to what we have already done that similarly p 2 is equal to i 1 q 2 dot and p 3 is equal to i 2 q 3 dot right in terms of this fine. Now, once you have defined that we can write the Lagrangian equation had taken the form p 1 dot is equal to derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q 1 minus derivative of the Rayleigh with respect to q 1 dot. Okay. So, p 1 these we can write in the right hand side it will be p 1 dot is derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q 1 Lagrangian with respect to q 1 this goes t minus v. So, this becomes plus and this remains nothing else. So, it will be E minus k phi uh, q 2 dot minus the relative term r a q 1 dot. Okay. Both the dotted terms in the right hand side. So, substitute you get E minus k phi q 2 dot is p 2 by i 1 and this is here minus r a p 1 by l a. So, that is the equation notice that equation has come out to be the same as the one that we have derived using the Hamiltonian method. Similarly, p 2 dot is the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q 2 minus derivative of the Rayleigh with respect to q 2 dot is uh, it will be 
derivative Lagrangian with respect to Q2. This term will remain, this term will remain, right? Yes. So you will have to write it as K phi Q1 dot minus K Q2 minus Q3 minus R1 Q2 dot and then substitute these two. So, you more or less understand how to do it, right, do you? And you, uh, I would request you to check that this method is yielding the same set of differential equations that you obtained by the Hamiltonian method. So, is, is the point clear? Here in this case, there were some forces acting inside the system, the torque and the back EMF, both were inside the system. If you take the whole thing as one electromechanical system, it was not that somebody else is applying that, but then those things are also properly accounted for the moment you use the, the, the Lagrangian equation properly. Only thing is that, that is the character of any electromechanical device that the torque which is a force is proportional to the current which is a velocity. So, there will always be velocity dependent potentials in any electromechanical system and therefore, we have to be careful about such things, fine. Okay. Uh, in the last class, we had started handling some uh, electrical circuits. There, you probably noticed a, uh, a problem. Let us just do one electrical problem in order to illustrate that carefully. Here, we, we consider say a voltage source, an inductor a capacitor and a resistor, simple circuit. How to do it? E L C R will say simple Q 1 and Q 2 and we just simply write it. Fine, let us write. You will have the Lagrangian as the kinetic energy half L Q 1 dot square minus the potential energy half 1 by 2 C Q 1 minus Q 2, uh, then it will become plus E Q 1, right? That is the Lagrangian function. And the Rayleigh function is half R Q 2 dot square, fine, no problem. So, we can directly go ahead. So, uh, along along Q 1, the equation will be uh, P 1 is the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Q 1 dot, then L q 1 dot that is the p 1. Now, if you have any difficulty ask me, huh? if you have any difficulty ask me, I am the person to ask. So, you can write p 1, then you can express uh, okay, p 1 is this and p 2 is I have a problem there, right? It is 0. Huh? If you do it like this, q2 dot is 0. Hmm? So, p2 is 0. That is obvious because this line, this line does not have, this particular loop does not have inductance. Hmm? p2 is 0. If p2 is 0, then the Hamiltonian is expressed as half L uh, Hamilton would be the potential energy plus kinetic energy, kinetic energy would be half L Q 1 dot square. Now, this will have to be substituted. So, uh, we will write it as, uh oh, 
it is easy to write 1 by twice L P 1 square right using this hmm? plus the potential function it, it is 1 by twice C Q 1 minus Q 2 square minus E Q 1 done that is the Hamiltonian function. Okay. Then we can write the equations directly q 1 dot is the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to p 1 is simple hmm? here p 1 by L. Where where I have written the Lagrangian, I have not put uh, uh, q i. So, yes, whenever I make such careless mistakes, please, please point out because that goes into the recording. Huh? Okay. Fine. So, you have q 1 dot is this and then uh, p 1 dot is P1 dot is minus minus delta r delta q1 dot is you can easily write now yes minus 1 by c q1 minus q2 and plus e right done right hand side does not have any dotted term so we are happy uh, then along the p in the q2 direction we have q2 dot is q uh, sorry p2 dot is is what yes same thing so 1 by c q 1 minus q 2 only the sign is different uh, minus in this direction there is the Rayleigh term so it will be uh, r q 2 dot so what are the ultimate final equations it is 1 2 3 right these three are the equations Huh? Wait, I'll, I have not yet talked about the q2 dot thing, huh? I have written it, but wait, q2 dot is the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to p2, which has turned out to be 0, huh? which has uh, or in other words, it cannot be evaluated, it could not be evaluated. But still, uh, uh, where is P2? It is 0. P2 is 0. If P2 is 0, P2 is always 0. What is P2 dot? Obviously, 0. So, if P2 dot is 0, actually this is not correct this is this is uh, all that we can say is we, we could not evaluate it if p2 dot is 0 we now have q2 dot right from here we will be able to write q2 dot is is uh, this goes in the other side 1 by r c can you see yes q1 minus q2 that's it Okay. When you write this, it was actually wrong. You could not evaluate it from what you have. So, we have taken a different route and that argument was sound. Since you know that your P2 is 0, P2 dot also has to be 0, there is no change in that. And so, this term is 0 and therefore, from there you can evaluate that. So, that gives you the equation 3. Good. Which? This equation? 
we had obtained this. Now, in the left hand side it is P 2 dot, which you argued that it is 0. So, if you put 0 here, then you can extract this. Fine. See, you need a 3 equation, but in the circuit, there are only 2 storage elements and the minimum number of equation that you really need is equal to the number of the storage element. So, we had done all this exercise, but ultimately ended up with 3 equations, which is not very economical. They are all right, they are all correct, but they are not economical. So, the conclusion is that this Lagrangian Hamiltonian formalism that we are taking, this uh, often leads to an economical set of differential equations, but they are all right, they are not wrong. Hmm? And we will have to learn how to obtain the correct economical set of differential equations. You might argue that this problem happened because we sort of blindly took the q1 and q2 as the coordinates, the two loops. And these two loops uh, independently may not be the minimum or correct set, fine. Let us let us follow that line of argument, let us see what where we end up. It is the capacitor here and the resistor here. Instead of defining the loops, this time what we will say, we will argue that the current or the charge through the inductor is one state variable q1 and the charge through the capacitor is another state variable q2. You can do that. Hmm. So, we are not using the mesh current kind of argument, we are using a different argument to see whether that helps. Uh, here is your E, here is your L, C, R. Then can you write the uh, Lagrangian and the Rayleigh? The Lagrangian will be in this case half L q 1 dot square due to this. Now, minus uh, due to this it is 1 by twice C q 2 square. Now, it will not be q 1 minus q 2, q 2 square uh, plus E q 1, right. And the Rayleigh equation would be simply, now this term, how much current flows through this? q 1 minus q 2. So, here it will be half r q 1 uh, dot minus q 2 dot Fine. Now, therefore, P1 is the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Q1, it will be L Q1 dot, fine, no problem. Hmm. P2 will be derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Q2 is 0. So, in this case also we get it 0. Huh? There is no problem about it, it is still 0. Oh, sorry, hmm. q 2 dot is 0, q 2 dot does not appear in this equation. Fine. So, if p 2 is 0 uh, and p 1 is this, then we can we can write the Hamiltonian as 1 by twice L p 1 square and the rest remains it will be plus huh? 1 by twice c q 2 square minus e q 1. Okay. So, now your uh, you can either write q 1 dot is equal to simply p 1 by l from here or you can write q 1 dot is the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to p 1 which is same thing. So, it is not really necessary to evaluate this, this automatically follow from the definitions of the p 1, p 2. q 1 is this and uh, I will not bother about the q 2 at this stage, because here there is something wrong. Hmm. Let us do it for uh, 
P1 dot is minus derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to Q1 minus derivative of the Rayleigh with respect to Q1 dot is is what? When you write the Hamiltonian with respect to Q1, only this sur survives. Only this survives. Yes. Uh, you will write e minus yes the relative term survives r times q1 dot minus q2 dot fine and p2 dot is same thing with respect to q2 it will be uh, minus 1 by c q1 by c q2 plus r again this term will remain q1 dot minus q2 dot Okay. Now, you notice that uh, P 2 is 0, fine, P 2 is 0. This implies P 2 dot is 0. Okay. If P 2 is 0, P 2 dot is 0. So, you have Q 2 dot is what? Q2 dot is there will be there, there will be something in the right hand side. Wait, we could not extract it from here. Huh? Q2 dot is the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to P2. Huh? So how do you write it? Yes, this will not give. Here you have this will be 0, we know this and therefore this is obtained. Hmm? So, we will not use this, we will use this 0 is equal to minus q2 by c plus r q1 dot we already know is p1 by, p by l, p1 by l minus r q2 dot fine. So, you have q 2 dot is you can now extract it uh, minus q 2 by r c plus p 1 by l. So, this is how ultimately what are the equations you have ultimately what are the differential equations you have tell me. Hmm? This is this is definitely one. This is another. Mm, yes. So you still ended up with three equations. So this actually uh, did not help, and we need to still refine this and in fact, uh, the proper methods, okay, uh, you know that the for electrical circuits which are pure electrical circuits, we have the Kirchhoff's laws for defining how the currents and voltages are distributed and their relationship. We will show then that that can be used in order to formulate the minimum set of equations, but that uh, will also tell us how to formulate the correct variables for this formulation. So, that is what we will take up from the next class. Typically for electrical circuits, how do we obtain the minimum set of differential equations, fine, okay, that is all, thank you.